Hello and welcome to a Star Citizen Monthly Report. It is August and the run-up to CitizenCon 2021 has begun, kind of? I mean, it's on the 9th of October, but work that Cloud Imperium is doing now is partly geared towards that event and Cloud Imperium have said recently that sometimes things aren't going to be talked about at the moment because they want to be saved as surprises for CitizenCon. We are, however, going to take a look at and summarize this month's report and see what Clan Imperium have been working on over the last few weeks and what they're focused on now, at least according to the report. Let's start with the most juicy part of this, or one of the most juicy parts, which is lots and lots and lots of ships which are unannounced in vehicles. The US-based ships team prepared the Constellation Taurus for release and resolved bugs affecting various ships across the fleet. They also pushed other vehicles through the pipeline, including both the Crusader Ares variants, which entered the final art stages. The Drake Vulture continued to progress through the white box phase and an all new vehicle entered the pipeline and the upcoming variant moved into grey box as well. There's a new variant of a ship or a vehicle uh, in the UK. Another yet to be announced ship had its damage levels of detail and final art completed with the team currently wrapping up the finishing touches before handing it over to tech art and downstream teams. The Redeemer received its external damage meshes and a final polish pass. The teams are currently working on the exterior levels of detail, while the interior is going through its final art pass with the cockpit, turrets and lower level nearing completion. Another yet to be unannounced vehicle um, is been talked about that the team is apparently excited to share with us. Um, move from white box to grey box. Um, so not too excited to share any information at this stage beyond that, uh, but uh, soon. While the Sabres cockpit and lighting were also wrapped up, the Retaliator is getting updates as well, and the first round of the interior gold standard work is coming to a close, with the interior spaces corrected for metrics and AI navigation. The new ship item compartments were added, and the cockpit received a pass too. Another unannounced ship apparently is deep in its grey box phase, with the ship team saying... With some issues with its exterior mechanisms now resolved, it's moving through the pipeline well. There are a number of artists working together on this one, and each area of the ship's interior is coming along nicely. Work began on a new fuel arm for the MISC Starfarer to support the refueling feature work coming soon. The weapon content team completed two size 7 bearing weapons for the Crusader Ares and they worked on kicking off a new Sonys 3 bomb for the A2 Starlifter and a variant of the mounted weapon turret for an upcoming ship. Now, lots and lots and lots of talk about unannounced ships and vehicles there. I don't know how many are actually there because some of them might be, well, they're actually it's the same unannounced ship that are being worked on by teams from different areas, maybe, but there's a lot going on. There's a lot of unannounced ships and vehicles, which we're going to see, I suspect, throughout this year. Uh, some of which will be released with patches, um, immediately sort of straight to flyable, especially the variants and stuff like that. And some will be as part of sales and uh, concepts, so uh, looking forward to all of that. Let's move on to environment. The environment art team continued to polish pyros, planets and moons. In Montreal, the team progressed with the grey box phase for the rest stop and Grim Hex medical clinics. Area 18 and Lawfields Hospitals are approaching white box complete. These areas are much larger in scope and require adaptation and revisiting to ensure that they live up to their potential. They further supported hospitals by populating the location with AI. In parallel, they iterated on the creation and placement of derelict spaceship puzzles. These puzzles will ultimately be scattered across planets and space and will represent minor points of interest. They currently are in proof of concept phase with them with the team investigating various future opportunities work also continued on the colonial outposts and hospital lighting for lawville and grim hex they started atmosphere and color grading for pyro's planets and moons and progressed with the lighting for pyro's jump point gas cloud Additional work was done to flesh out some of the gangs of Pyro, delving into their hierarchies, leaders, and wealth levels. The props team spent the month working up utilitarian variants of the medical gameplay props. These match the metrics and functionality of the high-tech props seen in Ampho 3.14, but have the appropriate art style to match more lawless or low-tech hospital locations such as Grimhex. Time was also spent creating new assets for Orison's Crusader showroom, including furniture, signage, and installations. Work continued on props for the Colonial Outposts too. Character arts. So 
Progress was made on new armors and helmets, the team began designing cybernetics and wrapped up new outfits for shopkeepers and the inhabitants of Pyro. They helped deliver a medical gown and medical skeleton. They also supported UI with shader R&D and provided exports of all character assets in support of the physical inventory UI. Backpacks were completed too. Tech animation work is still well underway, including assisting in the creation and implementation of upcoming key rules, for example AI combat iteration usables and art refinement to head assets. Features for characters and weapons. So the features team continued working on the new player inventory. Uh, the features team said there is a lot of our choices being made on what has to make it into the first release and what can be postponed. Even with some aspects of the inventory coming online later, the new player inventory is shaping up to be a significant improvement to the existing PMA, Personal Manager app. The new player inventory differs significantly compared to the current PMA with its limit to physical space and location. While the various landing zones will have a generous amount of storage available to the player, anything left in one location cannot be accessed from another. Players will need to make sure they transfer any items they need when exploring uh, into their backpacks or vehicle. Items purchased from shops will be delivered to local storage as well. There was a push to solve NPC standing on chairs and benches again. Uh, simply put, if an AI is in the process of exiting their usable as they stream out, they will now teleport to the position where they would have exited when they stream back in. Hopefully this will solve that. More general gameplay features. Uh, US gameplay features spent a part of July polishing Alpha 3.14 and planning for future initiatives, including work on Knickknacks, the player asset management MobiGlass app. They'll wrap up the development at the end of the quarter, and they're aiming to launch Knickknacks in Alpha 3.15. Gameplay features also continue to focus on the latest dynamic event, the Nine Tails Lockdown, working alongside QA and the player experience team to gather feedback and refine it before release. For future initiatives, the designers and environment team began setting up the new shops on Orison and planned the Expo Hall setup for the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2951 later this year. Meanwhile, the engineers worked on the TDDs for the Cargo Refactor and Character Archetype Editors, both of which will reach the review stage soon. The European Gameplay Feature Team began finalising the first iteration of the Loot Generation System. The UI guys continued to work on the new map system. Systemic Services and Tools, SST, continued the development of Quantum, the economy and AI simulation. This involved improving fidelity and interaction with the game itself to provide further intelligent reasoning as to why certain service beacons spawn and why shop and fuel prices shift. Features for vehicles, the vehicle experience team focused on a combat balance for 3.14 alongside supporting other vehicle teams in fixing bugs and improving upcoming features. They also continued to develop the new ship HUDs uh, along with the UI teams. Vehicle features also continued to develop jump points, which recently went through design adjustments to improve functionality. They also made jump points easier to work with and test, making sure that they can rapidly iterate and improve the look and feel of the whole experience. Vehicle Tech and VFX worked on improving radar, ping and scanning features. They also began preparing to expand these features to first person gameplay, where players will be able to ping for hidden life forms on foot and then scan for vital mission related information. With the vehicle tech team saying, it'll be nice to condense the macro level vehicle scanning features into a more granular on foot experience where players will be able to perform actions on entities that are only a few meters in front of them as opposed to a dozens of kilometers away. Support for showing emitted signatures and ambient levels started as well. This will give players an idea of how detectable they are and how they well they can sort of detect others and is there a lot of interference around and that sort of stuff. Narrative with other teams worked towards um, updated vendors and mocap and voice lines for them including bartenders and food vendors. There were some additional voice lines for upcoming missions recorded too. Engine! So there have been various physics improvements with uh, render mesh compression and optimizations. Various code um, has been updated for faster CPU processing, the Gentile renderer continues to be implemented and um, updated and lots of supporting features are getting added and legacy code removed so they're pushing towards getting that Gentile renderer 
and Vulcan into the game, but we don't know when yet. Volumetric clouds and atmospheric rendering saw improvements, and they continue to research and iterate on it, and runtime lighting and QMAP saw performance updates in the future. Hopefully we should see lots of improvements to gas clouds around um, Orison and Crusader, for example. The reworked render to texture post-effect pipeline was complete. This introduces custom bloom, drop shadow, color correction, and brightness adaptation that will apply to all visor and lens UIs, improving the visuals and legibility. They are also dealing with the final edge cases for the Super P cache for Alpha 3.14 and optimizing other dependencies on the services. Boom! That's it for the monthly report. This time we will be looking at AI updates and Squadron 42 as a separate video. Bam! Together. Separate separate from this video. That's what I'm saying. Um, and 3.14 is almost certainly going to go live very soon. So there's a lot to look forward to in the very near future. But what do you think? Are you excited for the Vulture, Ares and Redeemer? What do you think about the unannounced ships and vehicles? What could they be? The 400i may be one of them, maybe? Will NPCs ever actually sit down in chairs rather than standing on them? What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Mummy, I'm going to play Star Citizen when I get home. Well, little Timmy, you can't because hackers stole our house. This is a story I hear only too often. It was just one day before these two were going to get NordVPN. Now they have to live on the streets. Don't let that be you. Get NordVPN in the links below. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For August, we are giving away a Mercury Star Runner, the fantastic multi-crew hauler data mission runner, allowing you to do a little bit of everything the Star Citizen has to offer. To be in for a chance of winning that, comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details in the links below. If you'd like to further support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. The join button down below, you'll get some exclusive videos and content each month, and it really does help us keep going. There is also the new thanks button under my videos for another way of throwing money at us. Both me and Zin appreciate all the support for the channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the verse.